Hello and welcome back to another vlog in search of Tudor Prescott. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're in the um, marketplace at the moment, um, approximately um, opposite the China Palace and um, the Imaginarium Bistro here. This, um, uh, there was a very famous building here, you may remember. Um, if you remember born and raised in Prescott, it was called the Old Town Hall. And the whole, whole town, town hall stood here until 1962 and it was demolished. It's a magnificent building and there was a great campaign to stop the building being demolished. But it was bit demolished and now we're left with basically what is an empty space. But one advantage of this is we can see ourselves through to the uh, theatre north playhouse which opens in about two weeks time <laughs> today's um, um, edition of um, in search of Tudor Prescott we're going to talk about the uh, the manor court the manor court was based here it was also known as the court lease uh, you may have heard that term it was court lease it was kind of like um, a prototype of um, Prescott Urban District Council. It was like a medieval, it was from the medieval court, the court lease, the leet actually means 100. And it was when medieval courts used to meet underneath a big oak tree to decide how the town was gonna operate. They had funny names, these court leet people. Some of them were called burly men. There were the ale tasters. There were the street lookers, <laughs> wood lookers, and other such like. Um, <laughs> you may remember in an episode earlier on, I was at the Elizabethan Fair, and I said, wouldn't it be a great idea to bring back the traditions of the court leet? Um, as this um, series is all about looking at links to Sh William Shakespeare, and the town, well, the court lease is a definite link because in Elizabethan town times, the court lease was a very important part of local government. It decided upon who could live in the town, the fines that the town had, etc., etc. And they were based in this building here, and they were they last saw the, the light of day in the 1930s. You may have seen some old footage called uh, Perrying, where they would have hot pennies and they chucked them out of the, the window. Windows were up here and all people would be scrambling along marketplace trying to pick up these pennies. Then pennies were actually fines. So people would be fined for doing whatever they did, making a midden in the street, washing their puddings in the well or whatever it was that they got fined for, then they would be fined. And then fines were distributed to the poor people of Prescott on Perrying Sunday, where they chucked their hot pennies out, out on the streets. It was a kind of like, um, I suppose you call it a rotary club of Prescott, you know, it's a, a sort of like um, a charitable thing to do for poor people. Um, not so long ago, um, I, visit, I visited a place that Shakespeare would have known about and wasn't actually far from Stratford. They still celebrate the tradition of the court leet in um, Ulster, in Warwickshire. Um, and they do it to this day. They organise activities and events for the town and it brings in visitors from far and wide. Um, so what I decided to do, I decided to have a look down at Holcester and see how they operate the court leet and have a look around the town as well, because it's a very pretty town. So I'm going to show you that video now! Hi, I'm um, in Hulse, Alcester, 
and um, it's about eight miles from Stratford. Uh, I'm outside the Church of St. Uh, Nicholas, and um, it's again, it's a market town, just like Prescott, and would have developed in very much the same medieval manner. It's got the same old streets, and um, unlike Prescott, where a lot of the buildings have been demolished or changed here, you can still get a feel for how Prescott must have looked in uh, certainly in the Georgian period because you've got a lot a lot of Georgian type buildings here mixed in with the Tudor style buildings and the 15th century buildings of the 1400s so um, there's still a lot of that here it's very chocolate boxy and it kind of like um, um, it really does give you a feel of how uh, Prescott was I'm actually standing on Church Street which is well we've got a church street in Prescott this church street's a bit different because it's still got the old Tudor buildings here which is very nice to see so I'll do a little film and we can have a have a little look around Okay, welcome to Church Street, Ulster, or Alcester, whichever way you prefer to call it. That intro was pretty special, wasn't it? Just a few of the many events and activities organised by the current day court leet of Ulster. The activities of the current day court leet are very different from they were in the past. Mainly today it's of a ceremonial nature. And the court lead comprises of the lord of the manor and various dignitaries in the town. And their main objective is to maintain the tradition of ceremonies that are particular to the area of Ulster for over 700 years. And also to organise and participate in many events that benefit the community. They also raise funds for the distribution to local organisations and charities. And they always dress ceremonially as officers and they have a, a lot of fun with the local businesses going into the pubs and testing the ale and, and weighing the bread at the markets etc etc. It's a real fun part of the community and I think it wouldn't it be great to have something like that in Prescott you know rather than a kind of cobbled together Elizabethan fair. I think for festivals and events to be rooted in the community is the way to go very much in the spirit of the Shakespeare North Playhouse, which is linked with Prescott's history. Anyway, as we look round Ulster, or Alcester, you'll notice some very fine buildings here. It's a very lovely little village town, with links to William Shakespeare being only eight miles out of Stratford-upon-Avon. Yes, I'm sure he had many drunken bouts here. Did I tell you William Shakespeare was a bit of a drinker? Anyway... Yet it, it's got a fine church. The, the town is, just like Prescott, is situated around the church, very much Anglo-Saxon in nature. Although there have been Roman remains found here as well, so we know that the Romans occupied the town at some time or had some connection to the town. And they do have a Roman festival as well. But there's some fine buildings here. And I'm sure if you were to look at Prescott 250 years ago during the Regency period, perhaps it may have looked 
very similar to this with a lot of Tudor buildings still preserved back then and certainly a lot of Georgian buildings we still have some today in Prescott I must admit but not as many as we'd like obviously Prescott had a particular difficulty holding on to its heritage mainly because it was sandwiched between Liverpool and Manchester and it was in the industrial north the heartbeat of the industrial revolution and so it became an industrialized town unlike Ulster which was on the outskirts of Stratford upon Avon which were all the Tudor every, anything Tudor and old was preserved purely because of the connection with William Shakespeare so yes I mean if Prescott had had a different history it may have looked more like Ulster does today I'm quite sure of it actually but it's nice to make comparisons and it's nice to walk around towns and say, oh, yeah, I can see something about Prescott there. I can see, you know, this is how it would have been. And, and looking at how things have evolved differently. But history does that, you know, to a town. I mean, look at Coventry, one of the finest medieval cities in the country until the Blitz and World War II destroyed most of the heritage of Coventry. And that's history. But a street is pretty fine, don't you think? It reminds me very much of Vicarage Place and a place that William Shakespeare would have been quite familiar with, although, albeit full of Tudor buildings at that time. <laughs> with regards to the courtleet, I'll go back to the courtleet now. The term courtleet was not in common use until the Tudor period of the 16th century. In Prescott, the court was mentioned for the first time in 1591, although there had been a court in Prescott with leet powers from at least 1447. Before 1591, the court was called the court with viewer Frank Pledge. The word leet is East Anglian in origin, where it denotes a division of 100. The leet court had certain powers, which by 1353 had become known nationally as leet jurisdiction, and later still, from 1550 onwards, all courts enjoying leet powers became known as court leets. Members of the court leets were appointed various jobs. For instance, the Burley men were in charge of fences, hedges and ditches. The ale tasters were in charge of the ale and bread, making sure that the beer in pubs was not watered down and the breads were of the right size and consistency. A modern day equivalent would be a quality control inspector. The street lookers were in charge of a very distasteful but most important task of the town's sanitation. Since there was no communal scheme for disposing of rubbish and each householder would be responsible for his own, making a midden in the street or washing your puddings in the well could lead to a very hefty fine. You could even end up on the ducking stool or being thrown out of the town completely. The court leet was a form of government answerable to the lord of the manor and the king or the queen of England. And without doubt, many of our practices and local government, national government practices today originated in policies set up in the medieval court leet. I hope you agree that Ulster is a quite nice town. It's a very pretty town. I know I've been talking over it, but I hope you've enjoyed the images and a bit of history about the court leads in Prescott as well. I think it's important to make these links. Yes, it's a place that Shakespeare would have known intimately, no doubt. So, yeah, if you're ever down this way, do pay it a visit. Come have a look around. Great place to, if you're interested in history, like what I am from that the Prescott. So, um, it's great, isn't it? Olcester. Olcester. Ulster. They call it Ulster. I call it Olcester. Beautiful town. Um, some similarities to Prescott as well. Well, they've got a church street for a start. That makes a difference. They've got the old Tudor buildings are still standing and the Georgian buildings as well. Beautiful town. Uh, with many links to sh uh, Shakespeare. We're linked to Shakespeare now. <laughs> You might not believe it, but we are. And um, um, in a, f a couple of weeks' time, this place opens 
and I'm hoping to um, for us to go in and have a look inside on the, the open day and see what all the fuss is about, um, the Shakespeare North Theatre. It's a very important thing for Prescott, it's a very important thing for the North West, and it's a very important thing for the history of theatre in Britain, not just Britain, the world. Um, so, um, yeah, it, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Come and join me on my last, my very last video where we go inside the Sh uh, Shakespeare North Playhouse, and we also go into uh, a very old pub um, that po possibly Shakespeare would have drank in. Um, we all know now that the uh, the old Victoria pub will become a theatre bar. You'll get all your thespians in there, and um, yeah, I'm sure they'll be very welcome in Prescott. So, um, <laughs> thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next episode. <laughs> Bye. And you can't get any more Tudor than this. Look at this. Fantastic. Isn't that beautiful?